On November 3rd, America will decide who the president will be in January. Will it be incumbent President Donald Trump and Vice President Mike Pence? Or will it be former Vice President Joe Biden and running mate Kamala Harris? Now before we answer that question, let's take a quick look at the key issues of the race. It goes without saying that the COVID-19 pandemic has changed a lot of things, most certainly in politics. So it makes sense that a lot of voters are looking to the presidential candidates for action and reassurance. The Biden campaign feels that the president hasn't done enough to prevent the spread of the virus and the 220,000 American deaths. But on the other hand, Trump and his cabinets have argued that they've done everything that they could and that a vaccine is on the way, all this contrary to the statements of Dr. Fauci and others. In light of the death of George Floyd, protests surrounding police brutality and racial injustice have sprung up all around the nation. Joe Biden has continuously expressed his support for the Black Lives Matter movement with statements such as, quote, I will seek to heal the radical wounds that have long plagued this country. In response, the president and fellow Republicans have repeatedly called for law and order and have echoed arguments that the Black Lives Matter movement is a hate organization. Make of it what you will, there is no doubt that these statements will be on the minds of voters on election day. Now, although these issues will headline the ballot November, this November, there are a few other smaller ones that we need to quickly address. These are the rapid Senate confirmation of Amy Coney Barrett, the current state of the economy, and climate change slash global warming. With that being said, who will win? With declining popularity, will Trump be able to come out victorious? Or will Biden maintain his lead and take office come January? I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Until then, we're going to go to Truman students to see what they think about the upcoming election. Will you be voting this year? I will be voting this year. I just got registered. I am. Nope. Uh, what are your emotions like? Are you excited, nervous? Um, I guess I'm kind of excited to know that I'll be able to vote, but I'm not on the edge of my seat. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a monumental part of history. Pretty big election. Have you done any research about things like uh, who you're voting for in Congress and taxes like that? Um, not so much with Congress for the presidential election. A lot of my research I just have to do because it's debate. Um, as far as what I've learned from that, I'm just a one issue voter on China. That's all that I really care about in the election. Uh, yeah, uh, just looking over policies of both the candidates, kind of really trying to figure out what I want. It being your first time voting, just walk me through how you're approaching the election. Uh, I'm going to drive up to the polling place. I'm going to strut in there, let them know why I'm there. And I'm going to fill in those bubbles like it's nobody's business. Uh, just really trying to do my research, trying to make an educated vote. Uh, not too biased, not, you know. Uh, for you, you're so close to being able to vote, but you have to wait another four years. Is it frustrating knowing that you won't be able to contribute to an important part of your future? I wouldn't say it's frustrating. I mean, every four years, uh, you know, the new president gets reelected. And for me, this is, you know, since I'll be 18 after the election, or a few months after the election, this will kind of give me an idea of, you know, what I got to learn from this election for the next election, like when I'm voting, looking for what I'm looking for exactly, you know. So. Most people are familiar with the presidential election, but not so much with local and statewide elections. So we're going to take a quick dive into what's going to be on the ballot in November. In terms of the state, there are going to be five different elections on the ballot. These include the governor, lieutenant governor, secretary of state, state treasurer, and attorney general. But the one receiving the most attention is the governor race between incumbent Republican Mike Parson and Democrat Nicole Galloway. Like the president, Parson has come under fire for his handling of the pandemic. In fact, he and his wife contracted the virus themselves. For this, he's expected to, t to face tough competition from Galloway. There's also a big race in local elections between Emmanuel Cleaver and Ryan Dirks for a spot in the U.S. House of Representatives. Although Cleaver has held his position for 15 years, Dirks is running an aggressive campaign against him. Additionally, there are a few other positions up for grabs in Jackson County. These include State Senate, State Representative, Jackson County Prosecutor, and Jackson County Sheriff. Aside from elections for office, there are a few more things you need to know about. Ten judges, judges among the Missouri Supreme Court, Court of Appeals, and 16th Judicial Circuit, with its associate counterpart, will run to retain their seats. Additionally, two constitutional amendments are also up for approval or disapproval. To conclude, there is a lot on the table this November, so make sure to familiarize yourself with all the candidates, justices, and amendments so you can make the right decision come Election Day. Now let's head to the decision room where we will make prediction as to who will win the presidency.
Hello ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to do a uh, quick breakdown of the 2020 electoral map. Um, first I'm going to start out with the Republican strongholds. Uh, so we're going to mark any state that's going to be a Republican stronghold that is going to entitle Wyoming, Idaho, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Alabama, Kentucky, in West Virginia. Now, normally I would add a few more to this. Actually, yes, I would. Uh, North Dakota, uh, South Dakota, and Nebraska as a state. We'll get back to that. They're a little special. Um, but normally I would add a few more to this. You know, Kansas and Missouri would normally, in a, a typical um, election, be not quite safe, but more so likely. Um, but this is definitely not a typical election. Off to, let's go to the Democrats. We're going to have all of the West Coast. It's Washington, Oregon, California, New York. Not quite Pennsylvania. We'll get back there. Illinois. Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Rhode Island, Massachusetts. Connecticut, D.C., Vermont, and Maine. Um, this is about par for the course um, for a typical election. Um, you may notice Colorado's not on here. They're typically a little more Democratic, but are moving a little more Republican, but we're back there. And Hawaii as well. Now on to what would be our likely states. Um, First off is going to be um, home state of Missouri, which would normally be characterized as a uh, um, safe for the Republicans, but it's going to be a likely in this election. Um, Biden's been running a tough campaign, so is Nicole Galloway uh, for governor in local elections, um, and there's been a Democratic shift in that state, but um, not quite enough to sway. So is Kansas, so is excuse me, Utah, Montana, South Carolina, and I'm going to mark Ohio. Now, some people may think that this one's a toss-up, um, and looking at the polls from 538 and uh, uh, Ipsos uh, would dictate otherwise, but I, I, I have no re reason to believe that they're going to sway enough um, to make that much of a difference in the election. Um, and then Oklahoma as well. Off to the Democrats for the likely. We're going to have New Mexico, Colorado. Indiana is going to be Republican. I'm sorry, I forgot that wrong really quickly. New Hampshire. And Nebraska's. No, never mind. Nebraska's third and first district will be Republican. The uh, second district, which we'll get back to really quickly. Um, and then I'm going to mark Michigan as very much likely for uh, the Democrats as well as Nevada. Um, now, both of these are relatively close in the election, but I'm fairly confident we're going to go uh, to Biden. They're both polling well for him. Um, uh, especially in Michigan, he's doing a good job with the blue collar workers there and uh, I have no reason to believe that this is going to change in uh, the time that this gets released to um, election day. Um, now Alaska is kind of a, a, a little weird in that it would normally be characterized as a safe state or even a likely state, but it's just barely leans to the, uh, uh, well I wouldn't say just barely, but it, it leans to the Republicans this year, um, not as much as it has in past years, but um, it, it will go to them. Um, another few states that I think will go to the Republicans that are going to be a little more closer than uh, they wouldn't otherwise be. I'm going to put Texas there. Uh, Texas, um, there's a recent poll showing that Biden leads just barely in Texas. But Texas has been a Republican state, and I have no reason to believe that they're going to switch that anytime soon. Uh, as well for the Republicans, um, we'll get back to Florida. I think the Republicans will come out, uh, Trump will come out in North Carolina. 
win the election uh, there um, by a close margin, albeit, but he'll still come out victorious. Uh, let's go to Iowa. Um, this one is definitely a state that I think Biden could win. He doesn't need to win it, but I think he very much could win it. Um, and um, But I, I still think it's going to go to Republicans uh, either way. Also that I think is going to go to the Republicans. Uh, Maine's second district. Now, uh, the case with Maine and Nebraska is that they have a statewide, so two electoral votes from each of those states go to the, the Electoral College, but then they're separate districts. Nebraska has three separate districts within them. The first and third, I believe, will go Republican. The second one we'll get to in a minute. And then um, in Maine, there are two separate districts. The first one is definitely a Democratic one, and I think the second one is going to be a Republican uh, uh, vote this year. Uh, so let's get to Nebraska's uh, second district. I think it will go just Democratic. Um, not sure by how much. It's definitely kind of a toss-up right now, but I think it's going to lean uh, to the Democratic favor. Also that I think it's going to lean to the Democratic favor is Arizona. Again, another close state. So is Minnesota and Wisconsin. Now, these are big states in this election. Um, Biden's key to this election is the Rust Belt. And if he wins one of them, I feel like he's going to win all of them. That's been the case with most election. If one candidate wins one of those states, they win the rest of them. So um, also for the Democrats would be Pennsylvania and Virginia. And that brings us to 290 which is enough to win the election. Uh, now going to Florida, again, very close, toss-up state. I think it's gonna go to Republicans again. I don't think Trump will lose it from 2016. And again, with Georgia, um, it's showing close uh, that Biden could potentially win. He obviously doesn't need to win it to win the election. He could still win by a fairly comfortable margin, but I think uh, uh, that the Republicans will come out there. Anyways, uh, that's about it for this. Thank you.